Boards and booze, booze and boards, drink some beers, fight some hordes, drank too much, forgot our swords, ran back home, filled our gourds, got drunk again, sang some chords, boards and booze, booze and boards, with Mickey and Jeb. No, oh, whoa, what's up with the light? Mickey, stop, my eyes. I thought you were seeking it. I was, but I don't want to go into the light now, I'm oh. still young. Oh. So I guess I kind of know what game we're playing what today. What are we playing, Jeff? I think we're playing Light Seekers. Woo! Yep. Light Seekers. Uh, and the, the idiocy continues. Board the minion, the idiocy continues. Yep. Yes. Oh, I should probably <laughs> move that. <laughs> there you go, Nuts. <laughs> All right. Okay. Jeff's like, I just want a drink. Okay. Anyways. All right. So Light Seekers. It is a. I, I would have said a two-player competitive game, but they actually have rules so that it can be multiple players. And they so, started that from the very beginning. Yeah, so they it, designed the game to. I guess it's accommodate. a TCG, right? It is a TCG. Yeah. Um. So. Trading card game. Yep. So, hopefully that doesn't turn you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people don't like them, but uh, this one's actually kind of newer. Uh, it's not been around as long as all little, the other ones that everybody knows. A little um, bit over the. A little bit over a year, we first saw it at Origins. Yep, you I got to play it. I got to play. Jeb was busy with a really cool um, board oh, yeah. RP, JRPG game yep. that we are still waiting to hear it's uh, still news, news about. Um, but anyways, so just real quick, um, if you're familiar with Pokemon Magic... Yu-Gi-Oh, that type of thing. That's the path we're going down today. Personally, I th we're doing this review because I think both of us thought there was a um, enough differences in it, and um, the uh, the entry I would say is not too difficult. Right. You? Right. Um, so I actually got to play it uh, when I was at a convention. So uh, oh yeah, when, when I did that, uh, I messaged Mickey, and he was like, "Yeah, we should do an episode." Right, and and also, well, I wanted to see if you liked it, and he's like, "I think I liked it. I don't yeah. know how well I was taught." Then I we played a few games here, and and um, I got him up to speed a little yeah. bit more. Um, and so, anyways, we decided to do it. Um, I think that. I think it's solid. Um, it's got some unique aspects that yeah. you don't, like, a lot of the TCGs out there right now are pretty similar, right. but this has unique things that you'll see as we uh, explain it and go over it. And, and if you're a Hearthstone fan, I've seen comparisons to that, and if I think about it a little bit, it does have a little bit of that feel, because you do have a hero off to the side that can do stuff, like Hearthstone. Oh, I don't and know then too much about Hearthstone. Well, anyways, yeah. and then... Um, you know, and then you can bring bring stuff into your field that does things to your opponents, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Is it exactly like Hearthstone? No. I think Hearthstone has some advantages be simply because it's all online, whereas they had to design this so that you could still, you know, easily keep track of things, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, so far I think they did a good job. Um, I don't, you know... We'll go into more of the things I, you know, we liked and disliked uh, during the review. Yep. But anyways, uh, it's it's light seekers. I it's relic. It's it's kind of hard to find because I they started with major retailers, i.e. Toys R Us, and guess what? Yep. There is no Toys R Us now. You, you you can find it online. I don't know if it has. It's by Play Fusion and Tony distributed it. Hence the. The whole toy aspect of it and there is a whole line of toys that goes along with it get into more of that on the review it's eight plus for age uh, sounds about yeah, right I, mean, I think not... if you had somebody that was a little um, I, don't, I don't know if advance is the right word but I feel like it's along the lines of Pokemon yeah, if the kid it's... gets it like yeah. you might even be able to sneak down to six as long as they can read right um, but that's probably a pretty fair but as for point? deck building and stuff, I don't know if kids that young uh, can do it that well compared to like adults. But I mean, playing it, I think it's fine. Right. So. Yeah, I, I agree. So, anyways, without 
Um, there's a there's a lot more to say. We'll get we'll say a lot more during the review. So let's just jump into the uh, components, which are going to be cards. Because <laughs> it's a TCG joke. Well, I was like, I thought there was like a little there. There's a cardboard cutout, right? Well, no, you spoiled it. There's a spoiler. You can say spoiler alert. They put a pause. All right, so go, many people go are change, heartbroken. Don't go change the camera. All right. All right. So we are going to go over the components of Light Seekers. And as you can see, there is a huge play mat that Mickey was able to acquire uh, that each player is going to pretty much have. If you don't have this version, there is a right. so, paper one that comes with the, the starter. Right. So basically we're going to show you components straight out of a starter deck and we are going, our playthrough will be starter deck against starter deck. Yep. Nothing's been modified, so we didn't do any anything fancy. But this is, just so you know, an exact copy in playmat form of the paper mat that you get in the game. Um, I will say that it's it's kind of nice, uh, you know, if you get one of these, if you don't have a play mat, maybe laminating one of those or whatever. Um, obviously, you could use anything you wanted to keep score of. Uh, so yeah, you don't even need a play mat. You, would you don't need you don't need to. Um, it's kind of nice to lay out at least to get yeah. to get used to it. Um, so I first couple games, I would say throw out the paper play mat just so you get used to. Uh, you know, the, the, the cards layout, all that kind of thing. All right, so let's start with the components uh, that you would get in the starter deck. So you, you are obviously going to get cards. You get it. You're going to get a deck of cards. All right, so you are going to get... I'm going to incorporate a little bit of the deck building rules as we go through this so I don't we don't have to really go over too much at the end. So you're going to get a 30-card deck, you are going to get five combo cards, and you are going to get one hero. That is what comes in a starter deck. Oh, there's one other thing that comes in the starter deck, Mickey, oh. that's not a card. I don't know if this or is something. always going to be, but this is some kind of thing that you can do with the online play. I have no idea what it does, but it's it's a fancy little... We haven't done anything with it we yet. Haven't, so. We haven't done anything with that, So because I don't... Um, I did start... The, the beta uh, test for the card game online, just as an FYI, just went live uh, yesterday or the day before. So you can actually download and play the card game online also, just as an aside. For the starter decks, just so that you know, what I just showed you right here are, is the exact rules for deck building in the game. You must have one hero, five combo cards, they say, of which they say combo. They, they say combo, card. whatever. On the they, the all of them start with the word combo on the bottom, uh, and they these must be different. These cannot be the same. And then, last but not least, your deck of thirty cards. From a deck building perspective, you can have three of a card with the same name no more and exactly 30 cards similar to pokemon it's not a um, minimum it is a exact of 30. Yep. all right all right and then the last thing you get in the deck box is your Woo! you get a little a little oh, standy turn, turn standy the tracker there you go standy tracker guy so that you can run along the line. I got this fancy, because I got this mat at Origins, and I got the little fancy light seeker thing, so I will be making Jeb jealous with this. <laughs> he probably just couldn't give a crap, but it, anyways, I think I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all that matters. matters. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of cards. All right. um, we should probably start with the hero card. All right. So, there's a hero card. Hero's going to go down here on for setup, basically, in the back. All right, components of the hero card. You got his name. You got his ability. You got the fact that he's a hero. His starting hit points. So starting hit points, 
you would take your marker and put it there. The heroes do have different starting hit points. Yeah. As I said, everybody doesn't always start with the same. They could, but they might not. Also on your hero card are these elements. This happens to be the astral hero, because he's yellow, and he has, uh, I think it's sun, lunar, and gravity. Is that correct, Jim? Do you remember? I don't that remember, but it's in that the... That sounds uh, good, does it, doesn't it? Better than what I would have called it. I know you would have called it that, yeah. You would have made up moony I would have said sun, moon, and, and lines. It is solar, lunar, and gravity. Yeah, I think you said I messed that. up solar. Oh. Those are the elements of your card. And if you'll notice, this has a burst around it. it. It's hard to see, but it's actually a gold ring around it and then a burst. It's very obvious that that one is different. So that means that uh, this guy, I forget the term. Superior. Su what? Superior? That's a superior element. Okay, the superior. other ones are basic. Superior, and these are... Basic, that's the words that they use in it, and basically it means he's super efficient with this one, yep. um, and he's just okay with with those. All right, so that is a hero card. Let's slide him down into his position. All right. All okay. right, next up are the uh, different action cards. Okay. These are the, so far in the game, these are the three main types of action cards in the game. Okay? I use the term action card because the other card is combo card which I've talked about before that we're going to come back to. Uh, so you have an attack card, you have a defend card, and you have buffs. Okay? The There is also one other card that you won't see in any of the starters and it is a item card. And Here's an example of an item card. It is um, out of faction here, just so you guys know. It is a blue card, but I just wanted to pull an item card so that you would see it. And we'll go over that a, a little bit a little bit more later, but just know that there is an item card. So, components of a card. Uh, the attack card is going to have its element, so you, it's probably hard to see, but this is a solar one. There's a picture of the sun. Um, the name of the card, the fact that it's an attack, and then what it does and the defensive card notice that the attack card has swords the defense card has shields again the uh, element that is that what they're called in this game elements yes. okay the element and mind you the elements are a cost basically and then what it does and the fact that it's a defend card and repeat with the buffs we're going to talk about the buffs a little bit. Buffs have a special thing compared exactly. to the attack and defend. So, the buff cards, um, again, the uh, element, the name, what it does, and the fact that it's a buff. Okay, so that's the three major types of cards. And notice on the item card, just so that you know, uh, it... This one doesn't really have a cost, so to speak, but it, it, it's actually going to provide an element for the hero because these can get attached to the hero, and this is how I'm going to... It's called the weight. Right, and like I was gonna, exactly how I was going to say I was going to call it. It's how heavy the item is, and each hero um, inherently has a two that it can uh, equip with. So you either get one two value uh, item or you get two one value items and you can attach them to the hero and it provides that element and sometimes they do something also. Yep. But now that hero has that element available to it. Okay? So that's items real quick. We are not going to play with any items or anything like that, but it is part of the game so we figured that we should talk to you about them. So now that you know what the th three main types of action cards are, we're going to back up, we're going to go to the combos, which if you remember I said you could have five of, and unfortunately this one's missing a combo defend, but that's okay. Notice they're all different, 
And notice this is a combo attack, a combo buff. That's a combo attack, a combo attack, and a combo buff. All different. But there can be a combo defend also. So, those are all the types of cards. Okay, so uh, one more aspect of the cards that I forgot was um, when you are deck building, you obviously you're going to, since the elements are kind of like a cost, you're going to want to match the cards so that you're able to play them with what your hero has. Yep. However, there is a gray bordered card, no elements, so it's, it doesn't matter what hero you're playing, you can, you, can, um, you can play this card in your deck and you don't have to worry about it. You still have to adhere to the three copy rule. And as you notice, again, gray, and this is yellow, so there's the difference. One, and then the last thing is since we're showing you the Astro deck, which is yellow, um, Jeb's going to uh, spout off the names of the other factions that are available, at least as of now, in case you're interested. Uh, the purple is Dread, the red is Mountain, the green is Nature, the blue is Storm, and the orange is Tech. Alright. Now you're probably wondering what all these things do, and that will be when we start getting into the mechanics of it. So what do we got next, Jeb? We've got setup. All right, so for setup, the first thing that you are going to do, each player needs a hero and a deck. The deck needs to consist of five combo cards and 30 action cards. You can't have duplicate combos, but you can have three copies of a card that are just action cards. Right, so which Mickey's already said that. We've already right. talked about it, but just reiterating that is... So the deck building is relatively simple, yeah. so it makes it nice. Um, there's your hero card. Yep, you shuffle your deck there. and place the hero near you. So on the play mat there's a spot for it, so Mickey placed it. Shuffle it real quick, and this isn't going to be shuffled real great because we're actually going to grab the deck and pull stuff out anyways. Yep. So the deck so will go the deck. Yeah. That's right. your discard. Uh, next you're going to decide the play order. So depends on how many players are playing the game. Like we said, the this game isn't just a one versus one. There's, I don't even know if there's a maximum. I'm uh, not sure, but it's kind of interesting because the you remember better than me. The player to your left is your uh, you attack, right? And the player to your right you're going to defend against or something like that. Yeah, but anyway, uh, in my it's, notes I have it four plus, so right. you can do more than four people. But we are going to do a one versus one. So anyway. Uh, you're going to decide the play order, so whoever goes first, uh, let's say Mickey goes first right now, whatever. Alright, the next thing you're going to do is player one draws four cards, player two draws five. Uh, if it was a three player, player six, player three draws six cards, and then player players four and more draw seven. So since Mickey's first player, he draws his four. Next, you're going to set the life, uh, put your life counter equal to what's on your hero card, so what is that? Orion is a 29, so I'd place the, the marker on the 29. And then, as Mickey was saying, the person on your left is going to be your target, and the person on your right is your enemy, but in a two-player game, the opposite person is both of those things to you. Right. So, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter in a two-player game. Right. And that's everything for setup. So, the, an overview of the game is that players are just going to alternate turns until there's one player remaining. So, in the four-player match, players would get eliminated until there's one left. In the two-player match, whoever gets eliminated is the loser. On each player's turn, there are five phases, and we'll go through those right now. So, the first phase is start of turn. And just as an aside, which is another reason why we both suggested that at least for your first couple games, use the play mat because it has a nice little cheat sheet right here. Yep. And that actually is as about, about as simple as it gets because that's all you do. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead, Jim. Uh, start of turn is the first, and during that phase, all you do is handle effects that occur at the start of your turn. So uh, it's pretty much any cards that are in play that say at the start, start of your, your turn. turn. Uh, next up is the buff phase. Uh, this is handled in the order that the buffs are played. 
So, right. I didn't so, so I haven't really, we haven't really told you guys about the buffs yet, but we will get into it and then we will reiterate the phases. So after the buff phase is the action phase, and during the action phase you've got two choices. You can either play a combo or you can take two actions. So choose one of those, that's what you do for your action phase. After action phase is the draw phase. And if you played a combo, you draw one card. If you didn't perform both of those actions or just one of them, you get to draw a card for each action you didn't perform. And then the last phase is end of turn. And that's where you would trigger any end of turn effects. And you would also check, do an empty deck check, which is a, a condition to see if you lose the game. Because uh, it's not like a normal game where you just deck out. There's actually some rules that you have to go through for right. empty decks. So okay. that's everything that you would do on okay. your turn. Now, probably some of that didn't make any sense unless you've actually played this game before. Right. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to kind of incorporate uh, how the cards work with how the flow of the game goes. We can just have you take a turn right now. Since right. you're your first player, you just take your first turn. Okay. So, hopefully I can do this from the vantage point of you guys. And we will elaborate on the cards as we, as we play on this. Because, obviously, you guys want to know what makes this different than other card games. Okay, start of the turn. Fresh game. I have nothing, nothing to worry about. Next up is okay. buff phase. There's buff phase. No buffs out. No buffs. Uh, next is the action phase. So you can choose to either play a combo card from your hand or take two actions. So do All you right. have a combo in your hand? I do not have a combo in my hand, but I will. we will go over that in a minute. Okay. So um, the ba the, what, what's going to happen most of the time is people are going to be playing action cards. Okay? So... A, an action card is either one of the attack cards, one of the buff cards, or one of the defend cards, which I, I don't have, but I do now, because I just cheated and pulled one out. Okay. Now, remember that we had talked about the elements on the hero card. This is going to be important, because, uh, as Jeb pointed out, this, is the, this one with the shiny ring around it is the one that he's efficient in. Okay. And the other two, he are, what is he just okay basic. with? He's basic, all right? Now, what that means is each turn, you could play as many cards that had the solar cost as you wanted. The one that he's superior in, he can play as more than just one more, copy more than per one, turn. Right. The other ones, you can only play one of. Now, granted, we only have two actions, but the point is, I couldn't play two lunar and I couldn't play two gravity on my turn because he's not, that's not a superior power. However, I could play two cards that had the uh, sun element in it. So that's important to remember. All right. So let's say um, I am going to, let's do a little attack here. All right. So here I have an attack that is the plasmic sun feeder right it is a solar card so well, i know i can play that because that's what i'm superior in or efficient and it's going to deal three damage and then discard the top card from the recipient's deck okay so this one if i'm playing jeb he immediately takes three damage he would move his counter down three and then he would discard the top card off of his deck into his discard pile. And then this automatically goes to the discard pile <coughs> once I play it. That's one action. I can play another action. So let's show you how a buff works. Because defend and the uh, attack are um, exactly the same pretty much. Alright, so here's a buff card. It is a solar card. We know that I can play it because I'm allowed to play more than one solar card. What happens with a buff is it you put it to your far left 
the mat happens to have spaces. If you're not playing with one, you just put them start to the left and build them this way. As things go away, slide them over. Okay? So a buff card goes up here, and then, in this particular case, it says, it has the rotate symbol, damage to your target. Increase this by four if you last if your last discarded card is lunar okay so when it comes into play I check this top corner it has an X in it so nothing happens alright every time when it gets to the buff phase and you have a buff card in play you rotate it okay and you rotate them all and then you look to see what the current corner is if it has a number in there, then you do whatever the card says. So in this case, there's another X. So this would be my next turn, and then my next turn, and then my next turn. Now there's a 6. So that damage would go to Jeb. And then if the top card in my discard pile was one of the moon cards, it would do 4 more damage to him. Okay, but this stays in play until the buff card either hits a blank corner or it rotates all the way back to the beginning. Because some buff cards don't have numbers or X's in all four corners. Okay, so let's say this is further on in the game and it's Mickey's start of his turn. So at the start of his turn, nothing goes off that we know of. Uh, next is the buff phase. So well, now Mickey be has a state like that maybe. Sure. Okay. So Mickey now has buffs out during the buff phase. So the first thing that you're going to do is rotate buffs 90 degrees, then activate any lingering effects. Okay. So and you so, handle these in the order that you played them in. So go ahead, Mickey. All right. So I rotate that and I come to here. <gasps> There's no symbols, Jeb. What does that mean? It still says buff. Oh, that is a permanent buff? That's correct. I think. Yeah. Alright. So, if it's a buff card and it has no rotating sim symbols, that means it's a permanent buff until something triggers it to go out of play. Either your opponent gets rid of it, or somehow you get rid of it, or the card itself gets rid of it. Yep. In this case, this guy says, deal two damage to your target at the start of the turn if they have five or more cards in their hand. All right, or I mean, if they have more than five cards in their hand, okay. So that's keeping your opponent at bay, basically, is what it's it, what's it doing. If you know, if you've got somebody that's got mad draw power, that might be a nice one to have into play. So they're going to take damage if they decide they're going to keep a large hand, okay. So that's just going to stay there, and it's not going to rotate until it it somehow goes away. Now. We just grabbed this card because the evidently the Astro deck doesn't have any um, of the, the other kind of buff. Alright, so this buff, if you'll notice... It's called a trigger buff. It's called a trigger buff, and it doesn't have circles on, on the corners. It has, like, diamonds, or squares, or I don't know what they call them, but that's kind, kind of... Kind of like the Superman symbol. Yes. Okay, so what that means is that this doesn't do anything unless whatever this says down here happens, all right? So this is a defend ability, and it says move, and then like that. So it's basically got the move, the discarded action card to your uh, deck, okay? So this is a relatively wordy one that's probably good to explain because it's got a whole bunch of words on it. All right, so this card here, buff card, has the word burn. Just to, real quick, if a burn card's in your discard pile, you can't bring it back. If you have a card that says you can get cards out of your discard pile, you can't burn pull burn cards. They're basically kind of out of the game. Okay, this has this highlighted section of this buff card says it's a, de a defendability so that is the trigger effect for this card so on your turn as one of your actions if you remember you can use an ability okay 
So j just like some of the heroes have abilities, this is now an ability. So on my turn, if I said, okay, I'm going to trigger an ability, I would, um, I would get the ability and then this would rotate. All right. So in this case, I would get to move three action cards, dis, um, the discarded ones, back into my deck. And if I ever move anything back into my deck, I shuffle it afterwards. But anyways, and then after I did that, that would actually rotate. So the main thing is that during the buff phase, the trigger buffs will not rotate like normal buffs. They only rotate when they're triggered. That's right. the name. Alright, so that was a long explanation for a whole bunch of stuff. So right, hopefully so that kind of made sense. I'm going right. to take this purple one back off now. Next, he would discard any expired buffs. Right. So, so if this, like I said, if it was the, um, if uh, if this, after I rotate, if I go like that, and it's back to the beginning, it's expired, it goes away, slide stuff over, and continue with play. All right. And then the last thing after you discard all your expired buffs. You handle all instant effects. So anything that happens when you trigger basically goes off at this at this point. Yep. So, uh, and that's everything for the buff phase. So for a quick summary of the buff phase, you're going to rotate all the buffs 90 degrees. Any passive effects like increased damage, decreased damage, those happen. Then you're going to discard any expired buffs. And then you handle all the instant effects going in order of oldest to newest. All right. So that's the buff phase. Right. Uh, Mickey had played two cards uh, on his turn. And after he plays the two cards, because he only has two actions, uh, he would go to his draw phase. Since he used both of those actions, he doesn't draw any cards. And then he ends his turn. Right. So let's come back to, to Mickey's turn, turn again. again. And let's do a combo. Let's explain a combo anyways. All right, let me find a giant combo. Okay, combo. Here's a combo card. So in his action phase, he is deciding to play a combo card. Okay, so I've grabbed, out of the deck, I've grabbed a combo buff. All right, this is how a combo buff works. Notice at the top this time that there are multiple elements required to play this card. Alright, in this case, it is solar, solar, lunar, gravity. Alright, I have to have all those elements in my hand to be able to play that card. Alright, so... Let's see, here's a Gret. If I had that card in my hand, I play that. And there's a solar card. And there's the other solar card. Now I just need a lunar card. And these can be distributed among the cards, however, because there are some cards that have two or three symbols on them. So it doesn't have to be four cards because there's four symbols on the combo. That's exactly right. It's just he happens to have four cards. <laughs> so let's pretend I had these cards. This would pay for this buff. Now, when you pay for a buff, kind of interesting, these combo. don't, th yeah, this combo, these don't get discarded. They actually get put back in your deck and you shuffle them up, yep. okay? Now, like Jeb was saying, you can actually use other combo cards that have multiple symbols to pay for this cost. So this has a gravity and a solar. So I could actually take this solar out and this gravity card out, stick this one in, and now I've paid for that combo. Because remember, I'm not getting, technically I'm not really getting rid of this. I'm just putting it back in my deck. Right. And it might not even be that useful right now. So I would put these back in my deck and shuffle them up. The important thing is to remember, it doesn't really matter, like Jeb said just a minute ago, it doesn't matter how you pay for these in terms of what's up at the top of the card. It just matters if you have these. You, can, you might also have one 
that's overboard, like you have a combo card that has extra of something you don't need, but you really need to get it out. Sure, you can you can go you can go over the cost. The excess is wasted. The excess is wasted, but it's still going back in your deck. That's the important thing to remember. Pay for them, shuffle them back in your deck, and then this comes into play with whatever it is. This one happens to be a buff, so it would go up here. If it was an attack, you would read the attack ability. If it was a defend, you'd read the defend ability, and that's how you play your turn. Now that's your whole turn, except for the fact that you get to draw a card. Right after the act, his action phase consisted of playing the combo. So when he goes to his draw phase, he would check if he played a combo, he gets to draw a card. So Mickey gets a card. Right, and then his turn ends. Okay, and then so, Mickey's next turn, uh, start a turn, buff phase, and then action phase. He's got two actions. So this time, Mickey just wants to use his person's ability. He doesn't want to play any cards, or he doesn't have cards in his hand. So as one of his actions, he can use uh, his ability on his hero. If he has an ability. Yeah. Okay, this one doesn't, but that card that I had out earlier... Oh, he could use had, any ability on the field, right? Had, yeah, any ability. The card that I showed you earlier that had an ability, I could trigger that, and, and that, that would count as an action. And then, like Jeb said, maybe I had nothing else to use, I would get to draw a card. Yes, because he used one of his two actions, then going into the draw phase, he checks to see how many actions he didn't use, and he draws a card for each of them. Right. So, so if he spent his turn and didn't do any actions, he would get to draw two. That's right. And then there's actually a hero, there's some card that gives you three actions a turn, so in that case you could draw up to three. So. Right. So if you're paying attention, and you, unlike other card games, yes. there's no inherent, you automatically get a card. You have to decide with what you're doing on your turns. If you need cards, you either, you know, maybe you have something up here that might generate some draw power, or you just take a turn and say, I'm just drawing this turn. Take a couple cards, pass to your opponent, or whatever. But... That is uh, one of one of the unique things about the the game in terms of it doesn't have a you know a refill your hand or draw at the beginning of your turn or anything like that like many other right. games have. Right. And then I think the last thing that I need to talk about for the turn is uh, the empty deck check. I'm just going to go really quick. I'm not going to say everything about it, but just a, a summary is that you're going to check to see if your deck is empty and then you're either going to play cards or move card either play cards from your hand or you move them from your hand to the discard or from the field to the discard so pretty much when you run out of a deck you start losing cards on the field or your hand until you can't lose any more cards and then you actually lose so uh, so, all so the you're hanging, are in the yeah, room. Yeah, you're, ha you're hanging on by a thread, so it's not looking good, but it's not an instant deck out rule. Right. There is a, you know, like, I, I think it, it, what they're trying to do is eliminate the 100% mill, so that if you're right. all set up and you're like, I'm going to win next turn, you can't lose because you don't have any right. cards left. Yeah. I think that was their intention. I don't know, but that's kind of what it sounds like. It reminds me of Netrunner, where you can... When you Keep have an going, deck, yeah, you exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then a couple miscellaneous things I have. Uh, you cannot... You can only attack other players. You can't attack yourself, which there must be a reason why. And then the same thing with defend cards. You can only play them on yourself. Uh, I think that probably helps with, uh, like, people ganging up in a multi-match or something. Like, so you don't defend other people just to, like... Whatever. Well, especially if you had a heal, like if you had a, a card that trigger triggers healing off an yeah. attack, somebody would break that. Right. <laughs> uh, another thing Mickey mentioned were the burn cards. Uh, once those are in their discard, they cannot be taken out of the discard. So, like he said, they're out of play, but they're still kind of in play because uh, other card games take them out of the game completely. Right. These still just sit in your discard. There are unique cards that can only affect one player at a time. So you can have multiple copies of it on the field. You just can't select the same, same opponent. Same person to, yeah. to beat the heck out of. All right. 
so the only other thing I have to say is that I feel like we bombarded you with a yeah. bunch of information. Um, and I feel like, and you know, I'm, I'm going to guess that Jeb feels the same way. When you start trying to talk about everything that a TCG or any card game such as this does, um, some of it can get a little overwhelming because you, you have the, but if this, and this one's a little different. And, you know, so we tried to hit the major things. But again, um, like some of our other games, I, if, if some of that was just going like, I don't get it at all, watch the first 10 minutes of gameplay. And this thing really is pretty easy in terms of mechanics. Yep. So I think you guys will be able to see um, more of what we're talking about. And, you know, obviously for the, you know, for, usually for the first four or five turns, we really try to say exactly what we're doing then it tapers down a little bit and we just let you watch us play even though we're still commentating we're not you know we're not dragging it out because hopefully by that time you've got an idea what's going on yeah all right uh i think the last thing we we'll talk about really quick is the end of the game in a two-player game it's when your opponent's defeated really right. easy but if you're playing a three or more player game it's actually not the last person who's left it's instead of the last person standing, you get victory points uh, as people are being defeated, and right, whoever has right, the most victory points. Right, is because the remember the person to your your target is the person to your left, and if they're eliminated, then all You're of a sudden you have a new points. target. So if yeah. you kill two people and the other guy only kills one, most likely you're going to have more victory points right. than them. So that's kind of a unique way to do a multi multiplayer game again we're not going to play multiplayer yeah. i don't i mean if you have I, questions just yeah leave them we'll, in the comments and we'll, we'll try to look answer. them up because we don't most of the time with this kind of thing we don't usually play multiplayer i will say from what i've read though it does seem like they tried to incorporate it pretty good yeah so if you're a multi player you know like you're if you have three you, friends and yeah you can and never get a fourth like, if you're if whatever. you're a magic person you play edh or whatever and you you like that kind of group thing. I, it seems like they did a pretty solid job of thinking it out. So, yep. And that's everything I've got for the rules. So we're going to play a two-player game, and you should be able to see how the game plays. All right.